Hello everyone. This will be an introduction to brains. Uh, Mach 3 as a system has a lot of inputs and outputs. Uh, with TCP Modbus we now have 1,023 input words and 1,023 output words which a uh, person can use to trigger switches and events within Mach 3. As well as the normal inputs that we've also always had from the uh, printer port. We needed a way to more easily deal with that input and allow you to set what you want a particular piece of input information to the system to do to Mach 3. Macro pumps have been available for quite a while for people to do this and a, a lot of the OEMs and a lot of people have used macro pumps to good purpose. But one of the drawbacks of uh, macro pumps is that they're written in Visual Basic, something that not everybody can program in. Uh, also, they're slow. Macro pumps can take um, quite a long time to run, and anybody who's used them has discovered that an exceptionally long macro pump will only be run once or twice a second, uh, because the Visual Basic subsystem takes a long time to interpret and to change the way a uh, Visual Basic program responds uh, to Mach 3. So, what we've got now is we have brains. Brains are small logical pro programs. They are built up of inputs, lobes and terminations. Those three elements can define any program or any sub piece of logic that you want to run within Mach 3. Um, I'm going to show you the controls first within Mach 3 for dealing with loaded brains before we even talk about brains so that you have some idea of what I'm talking about as I go through this. There's a little bit of a learning curve here involved and uh, but I think that you'll pick it up very quickly uh, the second I start to go through this. OK, let's take our first look at a brain. In the operator menu of Mach 3, you'll now find brain editor and brain controller. We're going to take a quick look at the brain controller, which is the Mach 3 system for dealing with brains, just so you know where the buttons are. When I bring it up, a dialog appears with a drop-down box with the name of every running brain in it. Unlike micro pumps, Mach 3 can run an un unlimited amount of uh, brains. And each brain can do one function or multiple functions. It's really a, a case of how much complexity that you want to put in a single brain or whether you want to separate jobs out through many brains so that you can enable or disable them at will. You'll see an enabled checkbox. If I select a brain, it either shows you it's enabled or you can disable it. If you disable a brain, uh, it ceases running, and the next time you start Mach 3, it will not run anymore. If you enable a brain, it immediately starts to function, and um, it takes effect from that moment forward, and any time you restart Mach 3, it will continue to go. You also have a button for disable all if you want to turn off all brains for troubleshooting reasons. You can enable all brains. You have a couple of buttons here, reload brain and reload all brains. These are used after editing a brain. You may want to reload the brain so that uh, Mach 3 has a current version of it. We also have a view brain. And if I turn on this new brain dot brain program, which I've got in the uh, Dropbox, and I say view brain, a brain viewer opens up, which allows us to see um, an already programmed brain. And this is a nonsense brain. It isn't meant to do anything. It has a bunch of timers, AND gates, OR gates, and so on, all uh, triggered by the same X limit switch and going to an output. If I hit my X limit switch here, you can see that this brain is now triggering all over the place. The various timers are timing out on different periods that I've given them. They're activating AND gates and OR gates, and in the end, turning output 3 on and off. Uh, you can also see that on, uh, see a running brain on a diagnostics page. If we go to the diagnostics page and I push my limit switch, uh, what you'll see is output 3 starts to blink intermittently, and that was the output of that particular brain. Now, I won't go uh, any further into that brain because, it's, as I said, it was a nonsense brain. I just wanted you to be aware of where the brain control uh, system was where you can turn brains on and off. So I'm going to turn off that brain because it's really not doing anything. Uh, so that's what view brain does. Uh, the other thing is whenever you view a brain, when you're finished viewing the brain, you should close it before reloading any brains or loading further brains. 
Also in the system, under the operator menu, is Brain Editor. This is a standalone program which you can run outside of Mach 3 anytime you like, or you can run it from within Mach 3 to create a brain. So let's start the Brain Editor. And when I do, it asks me the name of our new brain. Well, I got a phone call today from someone who has a customer who runs a foam cutting machine, and they have a problem in that they want to activate a relay whenever the x-axis only is moving. In other words, they don't care about the Y, the Z, and the ABC. They only want to know that this relay will be on anytime the X axis is moving, either alone or in combination with other axes. So we'll design that right now so that uh, that person can see how it's done and show you all what a very, very simple brain looks like. So let's call this one Foam 1 and hit OK. And when we do that, our brain editor opens up. As you can see, the brain programmer opens up with a blank page. From here, you begin to create your brains. Uh, you can also print your brains on your printer so that uh, you can see what they look like and what kind of logic they have to them and keep them for later. There's only three controls in this program. There is the plus sign up here on the menu, which means add either an input or a lobe. There is a minus sign, which means delete an input or a lobe. And there is this inverted green T, which means termination. And this terminates the logic of a sequence in the, uh, in the brain. A brain can have any number of sequences. It can have many inputs and an unlimited number of lobes. Those are the only things that are in a brain. The program is semi-intelligent in that it knows what kind of signal you're dealing with and takes that decision away from you. It uh, knows when you push the plus button what you're trying to add, and it will guide you through making the program. So let's look at our example program first. We want to write a program which activates a relay whenever the x-axis is moving. The other axes don't make any difference. So when we think about that, the first thing which you uh, have to decide is what input do you need to look at first? Well, to my mind, it would be the x-feed rate. If the x-feed rate is other than zero, that means the x-axis is moving. So we're just going to hit the plus sign, and the system knows that we want to add an input because there's nothing else on the screen. So we're going to go to DROs. As you can see, you can select inputs, outputs, DROs, LEDs, local variables, or Modbus um, addresses and variables. In this case, we're just going to select DROs. And then on this drop-down, you will see a list of all the DROs inside Mach 3, uh, preceded by their OEM number. So if you're ever looking for a way of finding out what OEM number was that I was looking for for something, uh, these drop-downs are a good reference for you. So we're going to take uh, 806x feed rate and make that an input. As you can see, it appeared in a box of its own on the left-hand side of the screen. The very left-hand side of the screen is always where inputs show up and the uh, right side of the screen is where terminations show up. So just like a reading order, the logical order of a, of a Mach 3 brain is from left to right. So if I add, push the plus button again, the system at this point would add another input because I haven't told it to do anything else. But if I select an input, the system knows now that I wish to deal with an input and I wish to add some logical operation to it. So if I hit the plus sign, the system knows to bring up a dialog log called the one input lobe. Since we only selected one input, the system will give us a different selection than it might have if we had had two or three inputs selected. In this case, it's asking us what we would like to do with this particular lobe. If you look to it, you'll see that we have no operation, which basically does nothing. It just contains a value. Compare immediate, invert, timer, or formula. Well, in this case, this person wants to activate a relay if the X feed rate is anything other than zero. So we're going to say compare immediate, and we're going to say greater than, and leave that at zero. So we have compare immediate with zero greater than. So we're asking the question, is the input to this lobe greater than zero? When we click OK, we can now see that the box says it's a compare immediate logic. If the input is greater than zero, it will be true. Well, for this particular example, all we need to know is that it's true. If that's true, then we activate the relay. So we can click on that lobe and say terminate it. 
when we terminate the lobe, it asks us what we want to do. And we can do anything from press a Mach 3 button to set an input or an output or set a Modbus address. In this case, we're going to set an output. So we'll pick outputs. I'm going to pick output number two because this person's foam machine is probably already using output number one. And then I'm going to say OK. And there is a very simple brain, probably one of the simplest you'll see. If X feed rate is greater than zero, activate output number two. So here we'll select File, Save As, and I'll just call it Foam 1 and replace one that I've been dealing with earlier. At this point, you're finished creating that brain. You can go to Mach 3, and if we jog the x-axis, we can see that output number 3 is not lighting up. So something is not working with our brain. So we go to the operator, brain control. There's foam 1, and we can see it's not checked enabled. So if we check it enabled and hit OK and jog, you can see output 2 is now blinking whenever the x-axis is moving. Uh, brains are incredibly fast. A macro pump could take two or three milliseconds to do the job that we just showed. And yet over here on the far right of the screen where the mouse is now, you'll see a new DRO called Brain Time. This is the accumulated time of running all the brains that you currently have running. Um, how long they take each loop through the program. And I haven't yet seen it go above zero. Um, they run so fast. Uh, that they make a macro pump look like a turtle. Um, I suspect that over a hundred brains could be run in the time it takes to one, run one normal macro pump. Uh, but as you can see, the second I start to jog the X, output 2 starts to flash, and that one brain will solve the problem of this uh, particular customer with the foam machine. So that's an example of the simplest brain that you'll see. If we want to go up and debug it to see how it's working, we could go to the uh, brain control. Foam 1 is selected, and we say view brain. Now when we view this brain, you can see as I jog the x-axis, the comparator is input greater than zero goes green, which tells us that its terminator is going active. So there is a very simple program. Um, and from then on, it will work. Since it's enabled, if I shut down Mach 3 and restart, uh, that same uh, program will always be active. And that's it for the uh, first brain. I'll have another video shortly, which will show a more complex brain. And uh, we'll go further from there into how to edit brains.